Fashion Jamer is a fashion dress-up game developed by Sin Sophia and published by Xseed and Marvelous. In this game, the player dresses up a variety of characters in order to gain social media followers. It was announced on a Nintendo Direct on November 9th, 2023 and was later released for the Nintendo Switch on November 2nd that same year. The game's reception has been mixed, to say the least. If you don't know, Sin Sophia was the developer of the style savvy games on the Nintendo DS and 3DS systems, which have gained quite the cult following also known as Style Boutique in the PAL regions, and Girls Mode in Japan. Which, by the way, I love the name Girls Mode, it is so cute. These games had you running a boutique and following a storyline of growing your boutique, enjoying fashion shows, and more. It seems these longtime Style Savvy fans were severely disappointed in the lack of a storyline and missing features like the fashion shows in Fashion Dreamer. As a Fashion Dreamer fan, I had never played these Style Savvy games and was really curious what the hype was about, so I booted up the first game, Style Savvy for the Nintendo DS. I was immediately in love with the low-poly aesthetics and dated fashion. I also found it unique that the game was played vertically, similar to Rhythm Heaven. I didn't record my footage for this as I was just testing it out at the time, but I ended up quitting the game quite early because I couldn't really deal with the loop that played in the background of Grace's store. So after having a short experience with the first game, I decided that I wanted to stream my reaction to these games. But instead of starting with the first one, I'd start with a more recent game, Style Savvy Trendsetters for the Nintendo 3DS. So from this point on, majority of the footage used is actually going to be from my stream over on Twitch, so feel free to check me out over there. I love chatting with everybody and hanging out, and our community is very cozy and fun. Also let me know down below if for these styles of videos you prefer seeing the entire stream or just the game footage. This is my first time trying a video in this style, and I appreciate any and all feedback. So after a cute little intro sequence, this game's title screen starts us off in front of a shop called Mira Luna, where we can see this semi-cute outfit in the front window. Suddenly, we're greeted by our girl, Michaela. She invites us inside and asks if we can help her open the door, to which we're then greeted by a cute little interior of the boutique. She welcomes us in, chats about fashion, asks our name and birthday, which brings me to something I find a little strange about these games. Despite there being male characters you can dress up, you actually can't play as a man. Nope. This is strictly girls mode, which I guess is a given considering the Japanese name of the series. Nonetheless, during our chat we're met with a customer, Amelia. She asks if we can help her find an outfit as she spilled juice on her dress she had planned to wear for a date. Michaela claims that that's the saddest story I've ever heard. People are dying, Michaela. Anyway, luckily we had an outfit sitting right at the window waiting for her, which she ends up live laugh loving. Amelia leaves and after being complimented on our fashion abilities, in walks Shay. She becomes a staple throughout this story and I love her. I love her eyes, very Yaru, and she's looking for some- This is where the mechanics of the game start to be shown. Basically, if your store has something in stock, it'll show up in this menu, where you use the touch controls to scavenge your inventory for fashion that matches the client's needs. There's different styles, vibes, colors, and layers. After Shay slays her newly bought jeans, we're offered a job, which we accept, and are told we can start tomorrow, which is fine, because I don't have plans, I guess. After being sent home, Michaela meets up with... Emmy Lou? Listen, I don't really get some of the name choices in this series. I wish they would have just stuck with the original Japanese names at this point, but if you want a good video to watch that shows how they changed this game in the West, I recommend watching this video by Censored Gaming. I'll link it below. Anyway, Michaela is hyping us up, and this acts as our character creator. On the touchscreen, we choose face, eyes, nose, hair, etc. As the series went on, I think the representation of different skin tones and features definitely improved, but it's still disappointing for a game that's all about embracing your style. Though this game was on the same system as Animal Crossing New Leaf, which required you to tan in the sun to get a darker complexion before New Horizons finally offered new skin tones for the first time. Fashion Dreamer definitely does representation well, I think, but I don't really understand why we couldn't and still can't just have a color slider for things like this. Even Monster Hunter 4 on the 3DS offers more customization than this fashion game. Anyway, after all of that, our skinny legend is here. And here is our apartment. Me too, girl. Yada yada yada, we have a cell phone, we have clients, girl. I'm here to dress people up. Can we get this ball rolling? Listen, I totally understand the appeal of a management simulator, but something I really appreciate about Fashion Dreamer is the fact that I can pick it up whenever. I can dress someone up, have outfits made for me, and there's no restrictions. And that was kind of the energy I had about style savvy throughout my stream. I was like, well, this is just like Fashion Dreamer, except I'm more limited. 
And while I may be getting a little burnt out on dialogue and want to just get to the dressing up parts, I need to remind myself to chill and that this game is not Fashion Dreamer. It has a story, characters, and girl, relax and enjoy yourself. So with those initial thoughts out of the way, here we are at our apartment. Here we're introduced to our cell phone which gives us features like viewing past customers, a photo album, a schedule note when you meet with clients. We also have a save feature and, well, going to sleep. Going to sleep will send you to the next day, and when you go to sleep, your happiness meter gets deposited, which is kind of like a point system in this game. If I'm being honest, I didn't experience much with this during my playthrough, but basically when you do things for people or dress up clients, this meter gets filled. Yep. Anyway, when we wake up, it's our first day on the job, and we get to also explore a little bit. Well, sorta. Of. We gotta head straight to work. But there is a map that acts as a central hub, and it has a few locations, and it will expand later on. So we head to the store, we meet with Emma Lou, Emilou? Emilou? I don't know, man. Turns out she works here with us. Something something fashion talk, something something we dress people up. It's kind of the same thing, I'm not gonna lie. This beginning part of the game sort of acts like a giant tutorial. The more customers you help, the more it'll teach you about finding the perfect items with things like the search function, brands, etc. It really sets you up for how the rest of the game will go. After dressing up a few people and impressing the hard to impress Avery, we really have Emilou's attention. We're truly a baddie in these parts. And Michaela knows that too, because Emilou gushes about us selling a purse to Avery. Like, guys, stop. Bedtime. After a worldwide day of slay, it's time to wind down. Check our phone and see Michaela hyping us up again. These girlies cannot get enough of us. The next morning, Emily shows up and we're given the ability to dress up our own character, thank god. We're also able to decorate our apartment a bit, but I guess we're like broke or some shit, I don't know. I think we're all here for the fashion anyway, I mean like... Come on now. And something about me is that I will take a long ass time dressing up any character in a video game fashion related or not. I love customization. Also, Tumblr era me would have loved a flower crown like this. Are you kidding? I don't know how I didn't get into these games sooner. I'm also going off script right now just to say like, I don't know how these games flew under my radar for so long. I have to wonder what the marketing was for these games because it must not have been for me at the time. But I know that right now I'm actually playing these games a lot off stream. In fact, this video has taken me so long to edit because I literally keep getting distracted and playing style savvy on my fucking 3ds like what these games are fun dude anyway back at the skewer we're doing the same thing again yeah this game doesn't have a whole lot going on we do get to go to the buyer center though for the first time so that's cool we basically stock the store from here we can visit different stores with various brands styles you name it i actually found this to be my least favorite part of the game so far i don't really like going through and having to restock my store personally but for the manager aspect of the game it makes sense i'm just so used to fashion dreamer having all of the clothes readily available no matter when or where or what but luckily it doesn't last too long now we don't have to worry about missing items for clients since most of the gameplay from here on out is going to be pretty much the same let's go ahead and skip ahead a bit but before we do that i just want to say i thirsted over Brad so hard on stream and I just want to apologize to everybody who saw that. So after a lot of hard work, Michaela gives us the Grand Slam offer of becoming a manager. Real life side note, I actually was offered a manager position when I worked at Target and I turned it down. So I don't know, maybe this game will give me some sense of authority that I missed out on. Or maybe I'll just be dressing up people and being silly goofy, I don't know. Anyway, since we're taking over, we get to choose the interior, the music, the whole vibe of the store. And roll that intro. So I'm going to end this video here. I didn't plan on going in depth with the story here, especially because I didn't personally finish the game, but from what I have played so far, I totally get it. It's chill, fun, and while not perfect, it's one of the most coziest gaming experiences I've ever had. This amazing characters is just simply fun, and why not manage a boutique while you're at it? Experiencing what I have of these games, I totally wish Fashion Dreamer had taken more elements from them, especially the boutique. It's sort of there in the showroom feature, but it's really not the same. Fashion shows do seem to be coming in a future update for Fashion Dreamer, and the devs seem really responsive to feedback they receive, so hopefully we can see more stuff in the future with that game, especially more quality of life features. But for the most part, I'm just happy that these games can both exist at the same time. Hello. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, holy shit. I um 
that took so long to edit i don't know why i, I do know why i i was getting distracted and i was getting a little burnt out i actually almost that video was about like to be at least like five minutes shorter than it ended up being i hope you guys liked it it was a lot of fun i really liked the style the style savvy games i i literally that was one of the reasons why i was struggling to get this done is because i kept getting distracted by the games um it was really fun and um yeah so please 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 leave leave a comment down below any feedback is appreciated negative or positive um I just, uh, you know, I'm really glad that I was able to finish this, uh, so 